Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord and powers. Bless the Lord the reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Our Lord, God and Savior, King of us all, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, to whom is to our glory. Forever. Amen. After these things, Jesus and his disciples came into the land of Judea, and there he remained with them and baptized. Now also John was baptizing in Aeon near Salim, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized, for John had not been thrown into prison. Then there arose a dispute between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purification. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who was with you beyond the Jordan, to whom you have testified, behold, he is baptizing, and all are coming to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ. But I have been sent before him, he who has the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Therefore this joy of mine is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all, and he who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. And what he has seen and heard, that he testifies, and no one receives his testimony. He who has received his testimony has certified that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God does not give the Spirit by measure. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. He who does not believe in the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abides on him. Glory be to God forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon his grace and his blessing now and ever into the ages of all ages. Amen. We heard the Holy Gospel according to St. John, which is from the third Sunday of the blessed month of Tuba. And in this month, we celebrate the Grace Feast of Theophany, in which the major theme of all the readings focus on that of baptism. And when we speak of baptism, there is one key word in which uh, summarizes for us the purpose and the objective of the baptism of our Lord and our baptism in his name. And that which is the love of God. <clears throat> As the cry that was heard from the Father, this is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. And so it is the work of baptism that expresses for us the fullness of the love of God. Contrary to this is the fear, the fear not necessarily of God, which the actual word means to revere God, because we love him so much that we don't want to go disobey any of his commandments or his teachings. But many people live, instead of living according to the love of God, live according to the fear of the world. We fear death, we fear sickness, we fear judgment, we fear not being accepted, we fear others, we fear many things that come and go in this world. Especially in these ages, maybe there are many silent and invisible things which can cause great fear in us. Many people fear the unknown uncertainty of the future. And out of that great fear, many people are paralyzed not to do anything. As mentioned in the Catholic epistle, that fear involves torment. And while God sometimes uses different ways for us that in order to encourage us to come closer to him, as uh, one of the disciples asked St. Anthony at one point, do you fear God? He says, I can't fear God. I only have love. And he cited the verse which we heard in the Catholic epistle, because perfect love casts out fear. Now, most of us, because we don't have perfect love, we still have a little bit of fear of judgment and of the uh, condemnation, which is actually a gift for us. But as we grow in the love of God, 
that fear is transformed into a more perfect love. God does, does not desire us to fear him, as maybe in other religions, but his desire is only to express the fullness of his love and how we walk according to that love. As someone once uh, imagined, like a rocket that has different types of fuel, the first boost usually may come, which is that of fear. And some people are drawn near to God in very close time out of this fear. But after a while, as the rocket goes, those boosters are removed, and it only soars according to the love of God. <clears throat> the love of God, which for us is not just a word and an action, but indeed it is life. And that's why if we love, then God abides in us. One uh, writer once compared the fullness of the love of God to how to abide, how to remain. And oftentimes people are afraid because they don't understand how God abides in us and how we abide in God. There is a time when there is uh, a lack of true understanding of where is our home. And many people, maybe because in the way that they were raised or different experiences they have had, that home uh, could have, or the past, could have a negative experience. But actually, it's one of the most powerful terms in which inspires in us a great feeling and a great uh, security uh, of the love of the home. And when God says, abide in me and I in you, he is saying that the, your true home is with me. And that is the true understanding of the fullness of the love of God. And in order to remain or to abide, as it's mentioned, that when the dove had descended on the Lord in baptism, the dove uh, was very unique. Uh, it was not like any other bird. But it said it was remaining on him and, of course, the lighting him, putting light on him. But the remaining, that word saying how it's staying on him, is the same word that, uh, or similar to the word, is saying how we abide, to remain in a place and make it home. And the reason for the dove staying that way was to give the message that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is not external, not apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. He is one with Christ. After Adam and Eve had fallen, the Holy Spirit had left humanity. It was no longer abiding with them as in the beginning. And the great gift in baptism and after the Lord rose from the dead and ascended to the and before he ascended, he breathed into his disciples to return to them that gift of the Holy Spirit who is abiding in them. As St. Cyril of Alexandria said, this was the great gift that we are waiting for for thousands of years. The return again of the Holy Spirit who lives and dwells and works in us. If we understand this gift, as St. Anthony said, that we will pray day and night for the Holy Spirit to be active and renewed and uh, always uh, energ energized in us. Because we can, as say, reject or remove or deny the work of the Holy Spirit, especially with movements of fear, of doubt, of confusion, of anger, and of course of all types of sin, it, it quiets the work of the Holy Spirit in us. But as we pray in the third hour, say, renew your spirit in us. Because the newness of the spirit gives life. And because the, the body, our soul, is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives and moves and abides in us. This is more than just a feeling, but we understand when we are at home. Someone may go to many different places when they're looking for a home, and they will say, uh, this doesn't feel right. That doesn't feel like my home. Or if you are away from your home for many days or longer, when you turn, you say, this is my home. The Holy Spirit, when he's far from us, we have that feeling of estrangement, of separation. But when the Holy Spirit dwelling and working in us, we say this is the, the environment for us. When the Holy Spirit directs us whether to say, do, or work according to his name, he gives us 
this understanding of abiding in the Lord. <clears throat> All of us in these in past months have had opportunity to renew and to revive the work of the Holy Spirit in us. And I know as we are approaching the exodus from this uh, trial and tribulation, we need to reflect and to understand what is God calling us to do out of this. Because the, the God did not cause the Israelites to leave from Egypt just to sit in the, the promised land and do nothing. He had a work for them that was very clear and direct. And as God is calling us out of the homes, back into the world, we must reassess for us what are we to do and how are we to do it to fulfill God's love for us and our love for Him. Are we going to live the rest of those days in fear? Or are we going to understand better what is God's plan for us? How to love one another as God has loved us and to do His work which he has called for us. It is not time for someone to be confused or have lack of clarity, but we must work in the remaining days of our sojourn with this clear vision of God's love and purpose for us. This gives every day that we have in our life meaning, purpose, direction, and of course the joy of following the love of God. May the Lord richly Provide you with every spiritual blessing, glory be to him now and ever into the age of all ages.